We have finally got what we were asking for. As of the update last week, Nvidia graphics cards will now work with AMD FreeSync monitors. Sure, there are a couple of issues here and there, but make no mistake, this is a fantastic way to kick off PC gaming in 2019. Getting set up really couldn't be much simpler, as all you'll need is a G-Sync compatible Nvidia graphics card, and then a monitor that supports adaptive sync over DisplayPort. This is the main thing to bear in mind, as a lot of entry-level FreeSync displays will sadly only work over HDMI. Now, Nvidia say this is something that may change in the future, but at this current early stage is DisplayPort or bust. Once you are hooked up and connected, it's then time to make sure that FreeSync is actually turned on within your monitor settings, and then right-click on the desktop and fire up the Nvidia control panel. Making sure that you're running the latest NVIDIA drivers, and that the Adaptive Sync monitor is the one that's actually set as your primary display, you then need to set the monitor refresh rate technology to G-Sync, and ensure that G-Sync is enabled in both full screen and windowed mode in the G-Sync settings pane. If you're running one of the official G-Sync compatible screens, then you should be all set. But if you're using a display that NVIDIA hasn't deemed worthy of the G-Sync brand, then you'll get a warning bubble that will explain that you may experience some issues. Mark the checkbox anyway, hit apply, and then that's that. It is a really simple and easy setup process, and I don't think anyone's going to have any real issues. But I think the real important question is, is any of this actually worth it? Well, the short answer is a massive yes, but there are most definitely some exceptions. For my testing, I used the officially supported Acer XV273K, in addition to the more productivity-focused LG UC99, as almost a worst case scenario. But both of them worked really well, showing clear improvements over static refresh rates, and they both did indeed reduce stutter and tearing in my games. But having said this, FreeSync has always been just a little bit more complicated than G-Sync, because there's just so much variance in the displays you can buy, and you need to pay very close attention to the FreeSync range of the screen that you'll be using. Unfortunately, Nvidia's panel doesn't seem to tell you what this actually is at the moment, which is a big shame, and it's something you're going to want to look up, because as long as your graphics card is producing any number of frames a second within this range, the monitor will synchronise with your graphics card and give you a super smooth gaming experience. But if you fall outside of this range, you're essentially just using a standard fixed refresh rate panel as normal. Interestingly, it seems that the low frame rate compensation mode on the Acer does actually work, as the refresh rate indicator doubled as we neared the lower range of the panel. I have to say that I have very few bad words to say about the G-Sync compatible experience, as while the lag was not eliminated entirely, playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider between 55 and 80 frames a second really was butter smooth with very few hints of tearing, and is very reminiscent of the G-Sync experience. The UC99, however, didn't live up to the same sort of standards, and the main reason for this was the very small FreeSync range. To be clear, I didn't experience any flickering, but there was a slight amount of tearing still visible, especially in the unoptimized PUBG snow map. Turning on VSync in game did help to get rid of this, but it also seemed to bring back that dreaded input lag, so it'll be worth having a mess around with the settings on your individual monitor because it was an issue on the LG, but wasn't on the Acer. But I'd bet that the question you probably have is whether this works as well as a proper, dedicated G-Sync monitor. And the simple answer is... almost. Because there is just so much variance between the different displays, it's something you're going to need to assess on a per-monitor basis. Nvidia say that they've tested several hundred displays, and only 12 of them have actually met their strict standards. This means no flickering or blinking, and a wide enough range to offer a smooth experience in even the most demanding parts of your game. The full fat and official G-Sync displays, on the other hand, actually have a dedicated chip within the monitor themselves to control the refresh rate, and when you combine this with the rigorous testing and the panel adjustments, this does do a far superior job than your average FreeSync monitor. But as you'll no doubt already know, you have to pay quite a premium for that. And with displays like Acer's XV273K that do an absolutely wonderful job without this G-Sync chip, there's now even less of a reason to make that investment. Ultimately, with a G-Sync monitor, you can be guaranteed that you're getting a sublime gaming experience, but with a FreeSync monitor, you might do. 
If you are after more information on this, then be sure to get subscribed as it's something we'll definitely be looking at very closely in future videos. I'll also leave links to my favourite FreeSync monitors that I've reviewed down below. And if you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to smash that like button as I can assure you it helps out massively. If you do have any comments about this, any questions, or you have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor and you want to leave some information on your experience, please leave that down below. But as always, thank you guys for watching. Thanks to Asus REG for sponsoring the channel as always, and I'll see you in the next one.